Now, here's some price index problems here. So let's work this out to close this uh, particular lecture. So if the CPI market basket increases from 100 in year one to 105 in year two, what is the CPI um, in year two? What is the consumer price index here? So uh, <clears throat> let's take a look here. So if the CPI, if the index is going to be, uh, if the base year in year one, so year one is the base, okay, it's going to be, uh, 100 okay so the inflation rate here is uh, 105 minus 100 over 100 so there's an inflation rate of 5% basically so in year 2 which is um, you know year 1 is is 100 because that's the uh, that's the base index here uh, then in year 2 the market basket is going to be 105 so that's the correct answer here Okay, if the CPI increases from 120 in 2014 to 160, what is the inflation rate here? Well, again, you take this uh, index uh, in year two is 160 minus what was in year one, 120, all over 120 here, and then you get 40 over 120 equals one, um, one over three, okay, one over three times 100, and you get an inflation rate that's pretty high, 33%. So that's pretty, uh, pretty, you know, pretty high for an inflation number here. And then real GDP deflator here, finally here. So GDP deflator, uh, the formula here equals the nominal over the real. Um, actually, hold on a second. Um, yeah, the, the real over the nominal. GDP deflator equals um, the nominal over the real times 100. So if the GDP deflator is 150 and the real GDP is 1 million, then what is the nominal GDP? Let's say uh, the value is X here times 100. Uh, well, you multiply this out here and X, the nominal GDP, equals... 1.5 million as a result. So again, it's very simple math problems. Just be able to understand, you know, what the equations are, how do you find the inflation rate, and what's the formula for the GDP deflator. Uh, you have the nominal over real times 100.